when I found out that this was the one fundamental thing that made a relationship successful, I was mind blown. If you're tired of being single or you're tired of entering into relationships that keep you unhappy, unfulfilled, or relationships where you feel stuck, then you've clicked on the right video. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you what those things are and what they're actually called are the five pillars of compatibility. There are five different pillars of compatibility that are needed in order for a relationship between two people to thrive, to survive, and to be able to manage and go through any type of obstacle, difficulty, challenges, or adversity, which is very typical in a relationship, especially one that goes the distance. And these five pillars of compatibility are so important to the foundation of a relationship. In essence, if you were to compare these pillars of compatibility to roots of a tree, if the five pillars of compatibility don't have strong roots, if the five pillars of compatibility do not have a solid foundation, if they are not built on solid ground and they are not stable and secure, it will lead the relationship to either fail or it will lead one or both partners to feel very unfulfilled, very stuck, and very unhappy in the connection, which oftentimes will lead to separation, divorce, or a breakup, depending on what stage that relationship is at. So let me share these five pillars of compatibility with you. The first one is the physical compatibility. Two people have to have physical compatibility or sexual compatibility in order for a connection to work. I've talked about this in some of my other videos. If you're interested in learning more, you're gonna to wanna to watch the video after this one, where I talk specifically about the importance of dating individuals who you're physically attracted to. And while physical attraction, sexual attraction is really important in a connection, it's not the be all end all. Oftentimes what ends up happening is two people who are physically attracted to each other, two people who have that sexual chemistry or that chemistry, right, that spark that connects you two together, will end up believing that that's all it takes. What ends up happening though, as the relationship unfolds, as the relationship goes through its trial period, physical compatibility is not enough to drive that relationship into the long run. And so while it is an important pillar that is fundamental in a connection, it's not the be all and end all. So in order for your relationship to have strong roots, you both have to be physically attracted to each other and have that sexual chemistry to be able to connect on an intimate level with each other. Now, the next thing that's super important in a relationship in order for it to go the distance is the emotional compatibility. Two people have to be emotionally tuned into each other and emotionally aligned in order for the relationship to go the distance. This means that two people are conscious and aware and recognize the importance of honoring, respecting, and holding space for each other's emotions. This also means that the two people that come into a relationship together need to understand each of their partner's emotional needs, their emotional boundaries, and the way that they express their emotions. When you decide to move in together with someone, live together with someone, or have a baby with someone, you both need to be compatible on an emotional level. Relationships that are built on solid emotional foundations will end up being happier in the long run. This is because you both have an ability to identify and understand each other's emotions. This means if you're having a bad day, your partner understands, recognizes, holds compassion and holds space for you so that you can have that bad day while you at the same time understand that you cannot allow your emotions to negatively impact your relationship. For example, lashing out on them, blaming them for your emotions, etc. You both have to be emotionally intelligent and emotionally aligned to be able to read each other, to be able to understand each other and to be able to work together when emotions are running high. This means that you both have the social intelligence to understand that you're not going to use one another's emotions against the other, which could then in turn create a lot of difficulties, challenges, and arguments in relationship. I'm sure you've experienced this and let me know in the comments if you have, where your partners blamed you for them having a bad day. Like that's not how it works. A person having a bad day is a person having a bad day. It's not necessarily somebody else's fault. We're each responsible for our own emotions and what we're feeling at any given time. Above everything, when a relationship has the emotional compatibility, when a relationship is emotionally secure and there's two emotionally mature people that are in a relationship collaborating and working together, the two people will support each other through their emotions, through what they're feeling and give each other space to honor and process whatever it is that they're going through without guilt, shame, embarrassment, judgment, resentment, anger, frustration, etc. Intellect or mental compatibility is the next pillar that creates a solid foundation for your relationship. 
if you are unable to communicate at the same level as your partner, or if you are unable to communicate in a way that your partner understands, then you both are not mentally and intellectually compatible. The ability to fuse together or to communicate effectively together ceases to exist because there is an incompatibility in the way that you both process things mentally and the way that you understand and receive things intellectually. Now, I want you to understand that mental or intellectual compatibility has nothing to do with your level of intelligence or your IQ or what kind of schooling you completed or any of that stuff. What it has to do with, however, is the ability for both of you to communicate, to intellectually share ideas ideas to mentally stimulate each other in a way that brings both of you joy and happiness in a way where there's always dialogue and there's always something to talk about or something to share for a relationship to be fulfilling there has to be healthy communication between both parties this means that there is an ebb and flow a give and take a duality a balance for example if one person's really good at coming up with creative ideas the other person is really good at executing them and putting a plan in place to to be able to see the results of said idea. Sometimes this may mean that you may challenge your partner or your partner may challenge you, but that's the beauty of building a life together. And that's why it's so important to have mental or intellectual compatibility with the individual that you choose to have a long-term relationship with. If you realize that you continue to attract the same type of partners in your love life, or you feel like you're stuck in a rut in your romantic life, and you can't seem to attract the right partner into your life, book a cosmic session with me in the description box below. Let me help you in transforming your life and attracting the love that you have always dreamed of. To recap, we've talked about emotional compatibility, mental intellectual compatibility, and physical compatibility. The next pillar of compatibility in order for a relationship to go the distance, to be strong, stable, and secure, and to have the right foundation in place is financial compatibility. When I found out about financial compatibility, it really blew my mind because it wasn't something that I ever thought about. I always thought that two people have their own financial goals, their own bank accounts, their own money. You know, I'm all about being independent and having your own strong foundation when it comes to your finances, but I never really took into account the importance of having the same financial goals with your partner. It wasn't until I started dating after my separation where I was in a relationship with someone and I realized that this person and I did not have the same financial goals at all. And I was quite shocked at how much friction and the difficulties that it started to cause in our relationship. Because while I aspired to have a three-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, when it came to my finances, when it came to my financial stability and security, because I have a son and because I have financial goals and they're ambitious ones, the person that I was dating was quite the opposite. They kind of seemed to fly by the seat of their pants. They had a different vision of what their finances would look like, and they weren't really worried or focused on having the same type of goals that I had. And so this made me realize that long term, this relationship would never work out because in our mind, we were thinking two different things when it came to our finances. They had a vision of being able to work random jobs here and there, save when they could, spend when they could, and not really set up any proper roots or a foundation in their life. Whereas I wanted to have stability. I wanted to have savings. I wanted to have investments account. I wanted to buy property. I wanted to do all these other things. And so there was a big difference within our financial compatibility. Our mindset around finances were on two different wavelengths, really two different galaxies, two different worlds. So while we were compatible in all these other aspects, we weren't compatible financially, and therefore that relationship was never going to be able to make the distance. Sadly, not only is money one of the main reasons that people get divorced, but it's also one of the main causes of problems, difficulties, and challenges in a relationship. This doesn't mean that you both have to have the same type of patterns and mirror each other when it comes to your finances. For example, you both don't have to be super savers or you both don't have to be coupon cutters or you both don't have to be super spenders. It means that you both have the same goals, the same visions, towards your financial future, towards what you view as your financial security, as your financial stability, as your financial safety. If you do not have the same goals, vision, or mindset around your finances, this relationship will not go the distance. Or if it does, the relationship will be plagued with problems, difficulties, arguments, challenges, obstacles, hurdles. 
And I don't think anybody really wants to have to argue with their partner about money all the time. If you want to try and figure out whether or not you and this person are financially compatible, here are some things that you could bring up with them and have a conversation around to see if you're both financially in alignment. Talk about spending habits. Ask them about their views on investments, what investments they feel comfortable with versus what investments they don't feel comfortable with. And then see if their opinions, their points of views, their perspective on those topics align or match yours. Making sure you're both in alignment, making sure you're both on the same journey and you have the same vision, the same plan for your finances, whether that means paying off debt or whether that means acquiring a new property is really important in creating that stable, secure foundation that will provide you with a healthy relationship and a platform for your relationship to grow and endure during the good times and the not so good times. Now I've witnessed this last pillar of romantic compatibility break up relationships that I thought were going to be together forever. These are people who I knew. These are people who I thought were going to get married and have kids together and grow old together. But because they did not have this particular pillar of compatibility, their relationship did not have the right foundation foundations, their relationship did not have the strong root in order to build upon in order for the relationship to go the distance. And that is religious or spiritual compatibility. Now, this is not to say that you both have to be the same religion. This is also not to say that you both have to have the exact same spiritual perspectives, point of views or belief systems. It is to say that you both need to respect, honor and have some sort of compromise or middle ground when it comes to your religious or spiritual beliefs. Even though there may be two people who really love each other, who really care about each other, and who really want to go the distance, if the spiritual beliefs or religious beliefs are on two different ends of a spectrum, there will be obstacles and challenges that can lead to the relationship deteriorating or the relationship falling apart. And I have seen with my own eyes people who have converted from one religion to another or people who are willing to make compromises and are willing to understand. And this is very important in order to have that spiritual or that religious compatibility. You see, if you have two people who have very different perspectives, opinions, and points of views when it comes to religion and or spirituality, it could create a lot of conflict and a lot of arguments and discourse around how their children will be raised or what religious holidays will be celebrated or spiritual holidays will be celebrated. This could create a big ripple effect in a relationship, in a connection, which can cause a relationship to fall apart. When you're getting to know someone, it would benefit you to understand their religious perspectives, their threshold, their limitations, what their points of view are on different religions, on different forms of spirituality, to see if it's in alignment or compatible with you. If you're dating someone who mocks you for being spiritual, if you're dating someone who mocks you for believing in astrology or aliens or spirituality, or if you're with someone who doesn't respect that you're Buddhist, that you're vegan, that you uh, pray on Sundays, that you go to church on Sundays, that you do all these things, then that person may not be for you. It doesn't mean that this person has to go to church with you. It doesn't mean that this person has to abide and follow with all your religious or spiritual points of views and ways of living. It does mean that they have to respect, honor, and understand the way of living for you when it comes to your spirituality and your religious beliefs. Beliefs. After you experience toxic, abusive, narcissistic, or difficult relationships, and after you go through the breakups and you go through the healing process, the last thing you want to do when you're entering into a relationship the next time around is ignore these five pillars of compatibility. By putting the pillars of compatibility at the forefront when you are dating, you are ensuring you're going to align and find the partner that is compatible and most suited for you. Rather than flying by the seat of your pants, I think that's a saying or hoping and wishing or thinking this might be the one, if you take this practical approach of implementing the five pillars of compatibility as you're dating, as you're getting to know people, you're going to quickly weed out the individuals who are not meant for you long term, and you will quickly realize the individuals who you could potentially go the distance with. Not only will this weed out individuals that may be wasting your time or that may not be for your highest good, but you're also going to align faster and quicker with that one person that you're going to get to marry and that you're going to get to spend the rest of your life with. Obviously, remember that no relationship is perfect and that every relationship has its levels of ebbs and flows of compromises and of collaborating and working together. These five pillars of compatibility are designed to help you 
you create a strong foundation with your future partner, with the person you're going to marry, with the person you're potentially going to have kids with. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Make sure you check out the video after this one. We will see you later, alligator. Peace out. Bye.